This is Saul and Taurus. We wanted to uh, look at some energies for you uh, starting the week of May 2nd and ending uh, May 8th, 2022. So I want to wish all those birth. Yeah, I want to wish all those Tauruses who are celebrating their birthdays uh, this week a very happy and uh, safe birthday celebration. And also, too, because the uh, message uh, energies uh, end on the uh, 8th, which is Mother's Day. So uh, happy Mother's Day uh, to all the mothers out there as well. Someone had wrote in a comment uh, wishing me a happy birthday. I am not a uh, Taurus. I am a Cancer. Uh, I don't know where they got that from, but... It's all good. I am Cancer born. I'm um, Gemini moon and Aquarius rising. So I think it may have uh, been the fact that um, when I do these readings here, so if I'm doing the reading for you, Taurus, I'll collectively say we, you know, as um, a collective energy, uh, but not necessarily meaning that, you know, when I say we, that includes me. Okay, I think that's where the energy it came from. But anyway, uh, I'm using the Clement uh, Tarot to do your messages. Uh, I haven't reversed any cards here, so all the cards should be up in the upright position. And we're going to um, get underway here for uh, for Taurus suns, moons, rising, singles, couples, and bulls who are in sex, love, and energies. All right, and I do hope all is well, Taurus. One card flipped over. And it's the moon card, okay? So we have the moon showing up here. Um, let me see if I can... Yeah. Just looked like it was a little bit too bright. Yeah, dimmer that down a little bit. So the moon popped out major arcana while I was shuffling. So this is going to be uh, part of the energy that is going to take place. We'll talk about the moon later on, but you also all know about... <laughs> You should know about the moon anyway. It's about revelations. Things that were once hidden are no longer going to be hidden. It's talking about moods. Um, we're talking about, uh, this is an open general reading, so I'll be covering all areas and aspects of your life. So anything is possible uh, when that moon, moon shows up here. Definitely a cycle of uh, energy is changing for you. A new cycle is about to open up. Uh, basically keep an eye, watchful eye out on your uh, emotions this upcoming week. Now that you don't want them to be too high. You don't want them to be want them to be too low, Taurus. Okay, you want to strike a balance there. All right, so that's the major arcana moon that flipped out while I was shuffling. You want to begin these energies here with your first card, and it is the um, well. Look at this; it's the Ten of Pentacles. All right, so we're already starting um, opening up the energy for you in a good way. This is the Inheritance card. Um, this is the money card. This is the wealth card. So it could be uh, for those bulls out there who are, um, you know, into gambling. I always say gambling. You know, this could be where you gamble and then it pays off for you in a big way. Uh, but if you are gambling, just gamble responsibly. OK, Ten of Pentacles also is uh, a card that where someone can receive an inheritance. That's a possibility that is opening. And then also, too, it could be someone gets a promotion. Someone gets uh, a new job or could be in the same job, but, you know, starts another position, but you're getting um, compensated for, um, you know, the shift of energies. If it is the absence of money, I always talk about that. It could just be you feeling abundant about everything and every aspect of your life, including your work, including your family, your relationships, the uh, connections that you may have with, uh, you know, uh, not only family members, but friends uh, as well. So feeling healthy wealthy uh, in mind, body, soul, and spirit. Ten of Pentacles is starting your energy off. Um, so yeah, we have that there. And your shadow energy here, Taurus, is the uh, Ace of Swords. Ace of Swords is victory and success. This is the truth card as well as clarity, seeking clarity, seeking sight, excitement, or adventure. So uh, yes, starting something new. new. Well, it could also be... Um, well, I was going to say new conversations, but I'll reserve that for the uh, page of swords if it shows up here. But still, victory and success in some sort of endeavor, if it does express itself. This represents air energies, uh, Aries, Leo. Air energies, and I say Aries. Wow. Okay, you guys know what I mean, right? <laughs> air energies, Aquarius, uh, Gemini, and Libra. Okay, so victory and success. 
All right, here we go. And that's your shadow energy. I'll put that over here. What's coming up after the uh, Ten of Pentacles for you that represents your own energies? I forgot to mention Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo. Now we have the uh, Six of Wands, okay? This is the Six of Wands in this deck. And the Six of Wands is also about traveling. Um, and it's also about victory and success. Six of Wands and the Ace of Swords are always about victory and success, okay? So again, whatever it is, that's going on for you. There's the, um, you know, the situation where it could be, uh, say maybe you worked on a project. Maybe it has something to do with your work since it follows the Ten of Pentacles. But there's something to be victorious about and something to be successful. Uh, whatever that energy that may be for you. It represents fire energies, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. If you are traveling and it's work related um, or vacationing, say passage to, say passage from. All right. So this is a very um, good card to receive. Also, too, when the Six of um, Wands shows up here, it's a card of movement. So something positive is moving towards you or you're moving something positive in, in the direction that you want. Following the uh, Six of Wands here, uh, Taurus, now we have the um, Eight of Swords. Okay, so now the Eight of Swords presents itself. And uh, please excuse me if you hear any outside noises. I have my windows open and it's a beautiful day. Everybody is out doing yard work and you just hear a lot of noises, so and I don't want to close the windows because I'll be suffocating. Eight of Swords is the card of anxiety, worry, stress, nervousness, not sleeping too well. So it could be an issue going on here for some Tauruses. Uh, it may not be you personally, though. It may be the energy that uh, is surrounding you. So it could be uh, relative to uh, connections. It mirrors the Ten of Pentacles, even though the Ten of Pentacles is great, but it may have something to do with a Taurus and their work situation um, that you're feeling nervous or anxious about also the um energy of the eight of swords i always read it where it's involving could involve long distance uh situations and because this is a general open reading here taurus um that could include family members friends not just romantic partners and maybe there was a break of communication with these individuals or persons and it's creating some sort of stress or anxiety for you but i always point out that is you know it is necessary for you to make sure that if the eight of swords is it is definitely going to express itself that you know you can point your finger at something and that is tangible not something that you know you're just building up in your mind and you don't know what's going on uh i used the scenario here in the past about you know we create these movies in our head uh about any given situation that is connected to you and then you know it never seems to turn out the way that you, you know, played it in your head. All right. So don't create some sort of unnecessary mental stress uh, for you unless, you know, you know, for a fact that it is something that is real. You're not trapped or anything like that. You can work your way or see your way through the Eight of Swords energies. It may be just something uh, that is relative to somebody else and you're connected to that energy um moving forward all right so eight of swords represents air gemini libra and aquarius up next here we have the uh, sun okay so this sun comes out here this is the <laughs> the very best card in the tarot deck uh i'm not too surprised that it shows up here because the bulls are celebrating uh their birthday energies or and, you know for the bulls if they're not celebrating the birthday this week it shows up here for the energy of the bulls in general for their birthdays okay the sun is a card of happiness joy it is a relationship card um so it could be, you know, new connections being formed there, platonic and romantic. Uh, oftentimes, uh, not oftentimes, always I get, you know, um, California and Florida. Um, someone can be vacationing. It mirrors the uh, Six of Wands. So you don't have to be vacationing in California or Florida, but someone could be. Uh, I just could be just reading for some bulls who live in those areas. But if there is some sort of vacationing going on here it's in, in a very, um, you know, sunny remote area uh temperatures may be high so it could be uh taking a, a voyage to uh an island or something like that but anyway the sun comes in to bless you for whatever you got going on here okay this week also i get medical so i could be reading for bulls who work in the medical uh, capacity you know such as nurses hospital support staff 
it's a health card for me. So I also pick up, you know, there could be routine medical checkups for you guys this week. It also could be all is going to be well, though. Uh, I get x-rays of all kinds when the sun shows up. It's about exposure, ex excuse me, about exposure or being exposed. Um, someone could be having treatments for cancer, radiation and chemotherapy. I always get that with the sun. Nonetheless, the sun is a, view, a beautiful I don't know why I'm freaking tongue-tied right now. <laughs> I didn't even finish my second cup of coffee, and I'm speaking like my tongue is blistered or something. Anyway, pardon me, Tar, as, as I try to get through this reading for you. You know what I mean. The sun is the, uh, one of the best cards in the tarot deck, and there's a... a whole emphasis of energy for you guys to be uh, celebratory this week, happy, joyful, feeling childlike, all of that comes underneath the uh, energy of the sun. Following the major arcana, the sun, Taurus, we have the uh, Knight of Swords, okay? This is taking action, making moves. The Knight on the horse is the Knight in Shining Armor. This could represent someone making new connections when it comes to uh, platonic and romantic uh, relationships. When it comes to decisions and uh, making moves, okay, you are determined. Something going on here for you this upcoming week, uh, Taurus, that involves... Um, because he's looking in the past, I'm going to present this energy as something you've already thought of. You may not have the, you may not have had the time or the energy to execute uh, taking uh, some sort of move or making some sort of decision. But this week is um, could be a perfect time for you to do those things. Okay, that's the Knight of Swords, um, air sign energy again. Uh, Libra, Gemini, and Aquarius. And keep in mind that your shadow is the uh, Ace of Swords, so that's, you know, new things, uh, excitement, adventure. Uh, also, too, it's the uh, card of victory and success, as I mentioned. That's in alignment with the Six of Wands, victory and success. So something's going on here, but it's in a positive way. Not necessarily, uh, I'm just, yeah, following the sun, especially, I'm pulling in positive energy. So no worries there. All right, so up next here, after the Knight of Swords, we have the uh, Ten of Swords. And actually, the Ten of Swords is a pretty good card uh, to uh, receive as well. Because just like that moon, it's a phase. Maybe there was some sort of stressful energy that you may have been dealing with. And keep in mind, too, uh, two tens in a reading, just like two aces that would show up in a reading, is very auspicious energy. So there's a cycle of energy that's about to uh, close out or phase out for you. Maybe you guys have been going through some sort of rough period. Uh, and I'm holding these two cards up here because the moon will represent an ending or a cycle of energy as well as the Ten of Swords. Normally, when those uh, cycles end, there's new energy that's going to open up for you and it's uh generally you know positive so don't worry about that now because the uh, ten of swords i read oftentimes that may include or involve surgical procedures so it may not be you taurus that are you know that's um you know going to have some sort of surgical uh, procedure inpatient outpatient could be somebody that you know um but that's what I get. So it could be surgeries of all kinds, including dental. Uh, it is going to be painful, whatever it is that's going to take place. But hopefully that you guys are, uh, or if, if it's not you personally, somebody that you know is properly medicated uh, to handle the pain. It'll be passing energy, all right? Because it's the 10. 10 usually express themselves, but they don't stick around too long, just like the fives when they show up. All right, so again, we have air energies, um, Libra, Gemini, and Aquarius. Following that, Ten of Swords, we have the um, Five of Cups. Okay, so the Five of Cups presents itself. And the Five of Cups is always, I just talked about the Ten and the Fives, right? They show up, they express themselves, they don't stick around. So you may be feeling some, for some of you, you may be feeling some type of way. Uh, I always pull in the energy of where it could be just, you know, we get into those moods where, uh, it's not a situation or event or a person that, you know, uh, is responsible for the five of cups energies and keep in mind too, it could be, um, not you necessarily Taurus, but it could be a family member because these cups will represent the other, uh, energies that you are connected to, which could be your children, could be your siblings, could be, um, you know, extended family members. It could be your friends. So it all depends on what's going on and what happens to you, uh, you this upcoming week. Um, but I feel that if it is involving you personally, it will be a passing moment. 
because, you know, you might be just going through some sort of uh, brain dump. I always say brain or chemical dump. You know, sometimes we just get into those moods and there's nothing that is causing it. We just, you know, feel that way. And I think it's just our body shifting our energies. And uh, rightfully so, because, it, you know, you have all of these shifting cards showing up here, which is the moon and then the ten of swords. All right, so the Five of Cups here represents Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Up next, we have the uh, Six of Cups. Okay, so the Six of Cups showing up here for you, uh, Taurus, and that's going down memory lane. Someone's thinking of you from their past that you were once uh, connected to or had a connection to. That could be family members, friends that you haven't seen or heard from in a while. Someone is thinking of you. Um, it could also include, uh, because I, you know, and reading these cards all in the upright position, you know, someone that you were romantically linked to. And then um, if the death card shows up here, then it would be, okay, someone that you were romantically connected to, they were thinking of you, you were thinking of them. Then the death card would present a second chance or a reconnection reunion, so to speak. Um, but if someone is thinking of you, so don't be surprised that if uh, you hear from somebody this week that you haven't heard from uh, in a long time, and I mentioned family members, friends, and it could it include ex-romantic partners. Um, the Six of Cups, also too, the Six of Cups comes in where um, there may be a connection to you uh, for someone that you may have had in the past, a family member, friends, it could have been a you know husband, boyfriend, a lover, or whatever, uh, and they are no longer here. They're deceased now. So it could be that the specific dates, May 2nd to May 8th, has some sort of importance or connection to that. It could either be their uh, passing dates or their birth dates. That's what I always seem to uh, get with Six of Cups. And that's going down memory lanes, doing some sort of uh, memorializing or doing some sort of reflection of energies to someone that was, you know, that you were close to or connected to or knew, and they're, they are no longer here. All right, so Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces represents the Six of Cups. Up next, we have the Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords here is, um, again, someone just like the Six of Cups from your past. Now, this person could be thinking of you as well. This person, however, is different from the energies of the Six of Cups uh, because this person here could be a friend, could be a family member, and then there was some sort of break or separation or, you know, going in different paths or whatever. Uh, but this person is thinking of you and they may reach out to you as well. But I always tell you guys when the Seven of Swords shows up here that <laughs> they're still conflicted, okay? They're still conflicted. They're not presenting anything new. Uh, so you have your free will to entertain this uh, energy or not. Also, if there are anything or if there's anything that you may have uh, misplaced, I don't ever see the Seven of Swords, even though they um, indicate that it's, you know, being robbed or something being stolen from you, thievery and all that. I don't feel that. You may have just been, see, because it's a mental card. And sometimes, you know, when we have a lot of stuff on our minds, sometimes we'll forget where we put our keys. We'll forget where we put something uh, that could have been, a, you know, connected to our work. Anything that you can think of that you laid down, misplaced, and can't remember where you put it. And then this is the opportunity of that resurfacing, the Seven of Swords. I always get that with the Seven of Swords. So if you lost some keys um, and you didn't know where you put them or whatever, they show up. Or you, re, you know, rediscover where you put them. Air sign energies, uh, again, Libra, Gemini, and Aquarius. Last card here for you in this message is the um, Knight of Cups now. Okay, so this is the card that represents an offering of love, emotions, underneath the Knight of Swords. That's definitely um, a strong indication that there could be new connections being made, platonic, romantic. All right, so he's emotionally stable. Uh, the roles could be reversed for either, either of these court cards. They could be female. Um, but this card here represents Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Now, it re uh, mirrors the Six of Cups. Someone from your past that you had an emotional connection to may resurface, or this person here is thinking about you strongly. Also, it could be that the moon um, when it comes to an emotional level of, of feelings and expression, someone may actually tell you how they feel, how they really feel. 
uh, Taurus, okay? <laughs> and I'm talking about deep emotions. When the moon shows up here, it's all about those uh, emotions and they can run very, very deep. Uh, so yeah, someone could be, uh, and this is where the crushes are revealed. Remember I said, you know, things are no longer hitting, secrets are, uh, you know, comes to the surface or there's revelations. Now, I'm uh, sort of like pinpointing the revelations connected to the fact that this card, the Knight of Cups, is mirroring the Six of Cups. Somebody that you may have had a romantic uh, connection to in the past. Separate from that, Taurus, it still could be somebody who is having um, to run, have some, yeah, running some sort of deep feelings or emotions for you. Now, you could be already connected to this person, but then the moon would be the level of how they express themselves like you know you could be dating somebody i'll use this as an example you could have been dating somebody but you know you like them they like you but the uh, expression of how much they like you may be revealed like you know falling in love or their love for you is running deep that's what I'm getting. Okay. So that's what I have for you this upcoming week. I'm not going to toss any Oracle messages. If you want one, uh, the Oracle message from me is, Hey, Taurus, I love you. Stay blessed. And that's the message. Okay. <laughs> Keep the smile on your face. Enjoy your birthdays. If you're celebrating this week, um, because you have a great potential of energies to open up. Of course, I do these readings, spitting out my own interpretations, use these energies for whatever, um, makes sense to you. Okay. It's not going to connect with everybody. Um, but whatever it is that you do this week, Taurus, be safe and, um, keep smiling. Okay. Happy birthday. Happy mother's day. Talk to you soon. Bye.